Hi everyone, welcome back. So we'll continue looking at magnetic fields in this series. Um, this video is going to be quite dense. Um, here's our dot point. So basically what we're looking at today is we're going to look at the shape and the direction of a magnetic, f uh, magnetic field produced by current carrying wires, loops and solenoids. Okay. Now, before we get into it, up until this point, you might only be aware of the magnetic field surrounding magnets. Okay, a magnet produces a magnetic field. Fair enough. What you might not know is that electric currents produce their own magnetic field. Okay, and that's what we're going to study in this video. Um, how are these currents, or what 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 shape do these currents? produce of a magnetic field and in what direction do these magnetic fields point. Okay, so that's the goal of this video. First up, we're going to look at just a wire. So, uh, basically this uh, guy here, Hans Christian Ørsted, Danish uh, physicist, he was doing a lecture one day, ages ago, and he had, you know, some compasses on a table in front of his lecture hall, and he was playing around with electricity and he noticed that when he turned on the circuit that he was demonstrating or whatever, um, that the compass needles moved. Okay. Um, so here we've got a diagram. Okay. In this diagram A, there's no current flowing through this wire. Okay. And as you would expect, the compass needles would align themselves with Earth's magnetic field. So you'd expect them to point in the same direction. Okay. However, when we turn the current on, the compass needles move in a certain way. All right? This compass over here, which happens to be underneath the wire, is now pointing off that way. And this compass, which is above the wire, is now pointing in the completely opposite direction. Okay? Um, you can see this yourself. If you've got a bit of copper wire um, as part of a circuit um, hanging around your house somewhere and you can you can uh, play with it and not get electrocuted okay uh, make sure it's safe then you can put a magnet close by and just turn things on and off and you'll see that the the, the compass needle if you're using a compass needle as your magnet you'll just move around it'll wobble around okay um, that's due to this magnetic field that's being created by this current all right so here I'm going to show you another video and you'll see what happens when we turn on the wire that is going through this cardboard that you can see here. Okay, I'm going to mute the microphone and you'll be able to see what's going on. Ooh, battery connected. Battery disconnected. Battery connected. So cool. <laughs> battery disconnected. Let's get the battery the other way. Mr. Metzler is changing the connections on the battery. We're going to switch it. The oh, look at that. They go the other way. Magic. Magic. Nope, not magic. Physics. <laughs> Okay, so as you saw, they were turning the battery on and off, or turning the circuit on and off. And when the circuit was off, all the compass needles pointed in one direction. When the circuit was on, they all aligned themselves in what appeared to be a circular path. Okay, it appears that the magnetic field around the wire, which was going straight down through the, uh, through the cardboard, it looked as though that the magnetic field was in the shape of a circle. Okay, even when they flipped the battery the other way around um, and reversed the current, it appeared that the magnets or the compass needles turned in the other direction, but still in a circle. Okay, and in fact, just by playing around with this, we now know that a current in a wire produces a circular magnetic field that happens to just go around the wire, as you just saw. Okay, and in this picture here, you can see that the, the uh, wire, this 
vertical thing here, current is going upwards, is going to make it so that the magnetic field goes around in what looks like this anti-clockwise direction, okay? Because that's the way that the north pole of the needles are facing. All right, so fields around wires are circular, okay? And they don't really have a beginning or an end as you might expect like a bar magnet, which sort of starts at north and ends in south. Okay, here it just sort of goes around forever. Okay, but you still notice that the north pole of the magnet will align itself in the direction of the field that it's placed in. Okay, so that's pretty cool. All right, now how do we actually determine which direction this circle is pointing? Is it going clockwise or anti-clockwise? And to do this, we have uh, a rule it's called the right hand grip rule. The way that it works, basically, if you were to grip the wire so that your thumb points in the direction that the current is flowing, and here we're talking about conventional current, not electron current. Okay, if you point your thumb in the direction of the current in the wire, your fingers will curl around the wire in the direction that the magnetic field would be pointing. Okay, so if you go back to this slide and you look at this wire here, all right, imagine gripping that with your right hand so that your thumb points upwards because that's the direction where the current's going your fingers are going to curl in an anti-clockwise direction, if you're viewing it from above, around the wire, okay? And that's the direction that the field is pointing, okay? So it's a, it's a circle, you can draw an arrow on it, and the circle would be going in an anti-clockwise direction like that, okay? So that's how we determine the direction that the magnetic field is going from a current in a wire. Okay, right hand grip rule. So let's do some practice with that. Question two, determine the direction of the magnetic field in the following diagrams. And we're saying we're finding the direction of the field at the point marked X. Okay, so for the first one, we've got a current pointing towards the right. So imagine that that's a wire and you grip the wire so that your fingers curl around it and your thumb points towards the right at a point directly above the wire, you can imagine your fingers are going to be pointing straight back out at you, okay? So at that point here, the field that's produced by this current is basically just out of the page. And the way that you represent that is with a dot, okay? Or we could just say out of the page. I'll just write OOP for out of page, okay? because that's the way that your fingers would be curling around at that point, if you're using your grip rule. All right, this one here. Um, so we've got a current going into the page indicated by this cross inside a circle. So imagine gripping that wire, so that your thumb points in that same direction into the page, and it will try and visualize what your fingers are gonna be doing directly to the left of that wire. And if you if you do it in front of you right now, just put your hand out in front of you and, and do that, you'll see that directly to the left of that wire, your fingers are going to be pointing upwards. Okay? And you can imagine what's going on there. If you draw a circular path around this current, okay, at a point directly to the left of that wire, the field is pointing straight up. Yeah? So you can say that the field is just pointing up at that at that point, okay? It's a bit harder to draw a circle for the first picture here. So it's, it's kind of, you just got to do a lot of practice visualizing, you know, a circle in front of you in space. All right, but that's just using a grip rule, okay? So grip the, the wire so that your thumb points in the same direction as current and your fingers curl around in the direction of the field. Cool. Next question. So draw dots, crosses, or arrows in the circles below to designate the direction of the magnetic field near these current carrying wires and moving charges. So let's think about what a current is, first of all. Okay, so a current in a wire. Here, let me draw this for you. So here we've got like a, a section of wire and inside the wire, you've got electrons moving around. Okay, now in physics, when we talk about current in a, in a circuit, we're talking about conventional current. And for you know, various historical reasons, um, that direction is opposite to the direction that the electrons are moving. Okay, so if you've got electrons 
moving say down through this wire okay because that's what's actually happening we say that the conventional current is the opposite direction so we say that the conventional current is up instead okay and that's all a current is okay it's a motion of electrons um, so you just got to keep that in the back of your mind when you when you see a current you can almost imagine it as being like positive charges moving that direction rather than negative charges moving the opposite direction all right so let's just go back to this question so we've got a current here in a wire pointing towards the right and again we're going to use our grip rule to determine what to put in these boxes here okay so grip it put your hand out in front of you right now point your thumb towards the right and curl your fingers around okay and imagine that's your field so at a point directly above this wire, okay, it's almost exactly, well, it is exactly the same as this first question here, okay? So above the wire, your field is going out of the page and below the wire, it's gonna curl back down and go into the page, okay? Try and visualize that. Right, here we've got an electron moving downwards, okay? Now, electrons work opposite to conventional current or positive charges, okay? So what you could do if you like, any time you see an electron involved when we're doing magnetism, switch from your right hand to your left hand, okay? Because it's it's an opposite, all right? It's a, it's a complete opposite. So if you were to grab that arrow, consider that arrow as the, being the direction of the electron current, grab that arrow with your left hand because we're talking about a negative charge so that your thumb points down, and curl your fingers around with your left hand. Okay, and you should be able to see that to the right of this current, the field is going into the page, and to the left of this current, it's coming back out of the page, okay? Alternatively, if you wanna keep using your right hand grip rule, anytime you see a, an electron current or a moving electron, just point the arrow in the other direction, and that would be the direction of the, the conventional current. And so if you imagine conventional current being up, again, use your right hand because you've now switched it um, back to conventional current. Use your right hand, point your thumb upwards, and you, again, should see that your fingers curl around so that it's coming out of the page here and into the page on this side, okay? Whatever you do is up to you. you just make sure that you understand the difference between conventional current or positive current and electron current. All right, in this third one here, we've got a proton moving downwards, okay? And because a proton's a positive charge, the, the direction that the proton is moving is the conventional current. There's no swapping involved, okay? So you just use your right hand here. Again, grip that wire so your thumb is pointing down, fingers curl around, do that right now, do it in front of you, okay? And you should see that to the left of that current, it's going into the page, and to the right, it's going out of the page. Okay. Lastly, we've got a proton moving out of the page as indicated by this dot here. Okay, remember dot means out of the page. So, because it's a proton, it's a positive current. Okay, it's a, uh, it's a conventional current. So you use your right hand, make your thumb point out of the page towards your face and see how your fingers curl around that wire. Okay, you should be able to see it's curling in an anti-clockwise direction. So if we were to draw the direction of the field, it'd be arrows sort of forming a circle that goes anti-clockwise, kind of like that. Okay, cool. So just remember, electrons, you either use your left hand or you flip the direction around and that turns it back into conventional current and then you can continue using your right hand. It's up to you what you want to do. Okay, let's uh, up the ante a little bit. So we've talked about magnetic field around a single piece of wire. What now happens if we sort of loop that wire, okay, and create a, create a, like a circular loop out of it? All right, so this is what I want you to do. Imagine this wire here on the right, and I want you to grip the wire in front of you you grip this imaginary wire at different points. So first, I want you to grip the wire here, okay? So your thumb points sort of that way, all right? And your fingers are going to be going 
into the page on this side and then coming out of the page on this side. Okay. Can you see that? Oops, I've done the other way around. I've done the wrong symbol conventions. So that's into the page, that's out of the page. Okay, cool. So you should be able to see that. Try and visualize, try and grab that wire in front of you and see how your fingers curl. Now I want you to do it here. Okay, again, the current's gonna be going up that way. So grip it, your thumb's gonna be pointing kind of upwards and you should see your fingers curl around so that your fingers would be going through this loop on this side and then out of the page on this side, okay? And you can do that for every single point, any point you choose along this circular loop and any point that you choose, the field is always going to be going into the page um, inside the loop and out of the page outside the loop, okay? And that's what you get in this image here on the right. So what's going on is this loop has now made it so that the field is always only pointing in one direction within the loop itself. Okay, and that in this case um, is into the page. And everywhere outside of the loop or most places outside of the loop, um, the field is pointing out of the page. Okay? So make sure you understand what's going on here. Okay? We bent the loop so that at all points inside the loop, the field is pointing into the page. It's pointing in the same direction. Okay? So it's a loop of current. Let's do a question. So which of the following correctly indicates the direction of the magnetic field? All right, so we've got in A, is this the correct direction? Well, let's try and work it out. So what I want you to do, grip the loop, let's say here, Grip it so that your thumb is pointing in the direction of the current, which would be down at that point. Grip it. Are your fingers going into the page when they go through the loop? Or are they going out of the page as indicated by the dots? Well, if you do it properly, you should see your fingers would be going into the page when you're talking about inside the loop. Okay, so this is incorrect. These should be crosses. Okay, because the field, according to your grip rule, is going into the page on this side of the current, okay? So, whoop, so that's wrong, so that's incorrect. What about B? Well, B is just completely wrong, okay? It's either gonna be that or that, okay? You don't have a circular path inside the loop, that's just completely wrong, okay? So you should just say no, no for that one as well. This one, well, we already determined that the field should be going into the page when you're inside the loop in this setup, so that is correct. Okay, again, if you don't believe me, grip it, grip it at any point you like, and you'll see that when your fingers are going through the loop, all right, they're going to be going into the page. Okay, if I was to flip the current around, then the field would be going out of the page. Okay, it all depends on the direction that the current's going. Okay, let's go even further. So we've looked at a single piece of straight wire. We've looked at a loop. Now what happens when we just do multiple loops? So you get a piece of wire and you loop it around multiple times into a coil, all right? Basically what you get is this picture here and we call this thing a solenoid, okay? It's just a bunch of loops produced by a wire. Okay, we've just looped it around many, many times. Now, what's gonna happen is if you were to say, produce this kind of loop, okay, just go, Starting with a piece of wire, go around, loop it around, but keep looping it around a bunch of times, like this. Okay, say 10 times, and then eventually you're, you finish looping and your current goes off that way. What's gonna happen is each loop is going to produce its own magnetic field um, going through the loop, okay? And each magnetic field is going to add to each adjacent magnetic field. Overall, it's gonna produce a much stronger magnetic field through the loop. Okay, but in this case, we're talking about through the solenoid, through this coil, okay? Um, and what's basically you've turned it into is a magnet, okay? This is a very similar field pattern to a bar magnet, okay? So coiling up a wire many, many times and passing a current through it, you've now created an electromagnet, 
and you can actually uh, vary the strength of this electromagnet by varying the current. And that's actually what um, junkyards use, like car junkyards, when they need to lift those, and they use that machine to lift um, heavy cars from one area to another. What they basically do is they've created this kind of setup and they just switch on a switch, make the current flow, and you've produced a bar magnet and you can vary the strength of it by varying the, the current, okay? So, there we go. We've produced a strong magnet by coiling a wire a bunch of times and passing a current through it. We've created a solenoid, we've created an electromagnet. How can we determine the direction of the field through this solenoid, okay? Well, now what we're gonna do is we're going to swap the meaning of our thumb and fingers, okay? So when we're talking about the field around a wire, we say the thumb is the current and the fingers are the field. For a solenoid, we're gonna swap them, okay? So now the fingers are the current and the thumb is the field that is being produced through the coils, okay? Through these loops. So if you look at this picture here, Okay, the current starts on this side, goes up the front and down the back, up the front, down the back, up the front, down the back, and so on. So what I want you to do is get your right hand in front of you, grip this coil so that your fingers go up the front and down the back. And what you should get is your thumb is pointing towards the left for this particular picture. And what that means is that side over here can be considered the north pole of this electromagnet that you've created. So if you compare this to the picture here, okay, basically this side is now the north pole compared to this bar magnet, which has a north pole there as well, okay? And the other end would be the south pole of this electromagnet. So the field is going through this solenoid towards the left, it's gonna curl around, go back through like that, okay? So we determine the direction of the field through the solenoid, okay? And it behaves like a bar magnet. So let's do some questions. Which of the following correctly shows the direction of the field inside the solenoid? Okay, so the first one, we look which direction is the current going? Well, it's coming out of positive, going around this way and into negative on that side, okay? So the current goes up the front, down the back up the front, down the back, up the front, down the back. So what I want you to do is get your right hand, curl your fingers so they go up the front and down the back, okay? And you should see that your thumb is gonna be pointing towards the left. So this particular orientation for the north and south poles is incorrect. That should be north and that should be south according to our grip rule. So that's wrong. Okay, let's look at B. Well, the current's going in the same direction, so that's exactly the same as the first one. So we already know that our thumb is gonna be pointing to the left, and that's always gonna to point towards the north side of our solenoid, and that's how it's been written here. So that's correct, okay, that's all fine, all good. All right, down here for C, okay, the polarity of our voltage source has switched around. So now our current is starting here on the right, going up the back, down the front up the back, down the front, up the back, down the front. So what I want you to do is get your fingers, go up the back, curl it up and down the front. Okay, and you should see that your thumb is gonna be pointing to the right, indicating the direction of north, which is wrong for this question. So incorrect, okay? And it turns out that D is the correct orientation. Okay, so for solenoids, your fingers now become the direction of the current and your thumb points in the direction of the field that's through the solenoid, okay? It points to the north direction of your solenoid. Um, we'll stop there, okay? That should say break, uh, but we'll stop there. All right, see you then.